What do you think that means? Any ideas? Nothing's wrong. Understand that story, you can base your decisions or make decisions that best represent what the business is doing. Okay? Until you actually understand the numbers and are able to analyze those numbers, you won't be able. going sort of blind. So that's pretty much what it's telling us. You're demonstrating an understanding of management accounting. Management accounting is just the financial statements. Talking about the financial statements and the numbers. Okay? That's what management accounting is. Is the numbers. And how it involves decision making. So, <clears throat> you know how at the beginning of the here, of the beginning of the term, we talked about who actually made the decision, what, who used the information, yeah? Who uses information, accounting information? Would you invest in it? Potentially, if there is a opportunity to make profit, but not necessarily. Okay. And people who are um, debtors use that sort of financial information as well. So banks, people who loan people money, use that information. What this topic teaches you very, very briefly, very not in huge amounts of detail, it just gives you a taste of it, is looking at that information and how you can decipher it. Most accountants, this is what you do. This is what I did most of the time. Did I actually produce financial statements when I was an accountant? In my first couple of years, I did. After that, no. <coughs> I'll be looking at the accounts that were produced by other accountants or were produced by the systems, the computer system. I'll be analysing them and making decisions. When you're looking at <coughs> big companies, most of the time, do you know what a board is? It's the people who run the business. The company board is the people who make the decisions. Okay? So you have a chairman and you usually have board members. They are the people that make the decisions for the company and for big companies. You usually have an accountant on that board. Why do you have an accountant on that board? Because they can read the numbers. They can decipher those numbers. Any big decisions made by companies comes from the numbers. Is backed up by the numbers. It is backed up 
that by the accountants who are actually deciphering those figures. So when I was working for the big banks, we looked at the numbers in regards to closing Australia. The numbers did not work, so we closed Australia. 300 jobs gone. That was backed up by the numbers. Okay. The big decisions are made by deciphering what the numbers are actually telling us. And as I said, this topic is only very brief. It doesn't go into huge amounts of detail. Okay? So, decision making. Two types. This is managers internal making decisions. Routine ones. That's just usually done by just general managers. How much stock to put on the shelves? Um, how much to charge? All those sorts of just the day to day decision making. Yeah, it's backed up by the accounts because you're looking at the stock levels and the stock numbers and what's selling, what's not. But it's not, it's a day-to-day -day decision. Then you've got the bigger ones and that's usually done by the board. And that's str strategic decisions. Strategic decisions are decisions which are going to, where your business, you want to lead your business. What is your end goal? What's your big goals? And how are you going to get it? For example, a plumber, they might want to have two, three, four plumbing trucks on, on the road and make their business bigger. They might want to cover all of the, the Wellington area. Or they just might want to go, I just want to stay, I want to earn this amount of money and that I'll be happy with that. That's the big decision making. That's the strategic decision making. Big picture. Okay? What market they go into, what products they actually provide, what services they provide, and what if there is big um, purchases. Like where are they going to purchase the property that they work from or are they just going to rent it? They're the big decisions and that's the strategic decision. Again, it's run by the numbers. Because you're not going to go, okay, I'm going to purchase a building which is going to be 10 million where I can rent one for $200 a month. Doesn't make sense. Yeah? <clears throat> Part of the decision making, you're looking at budgets. What's a budget? Does anyone know what a budget is? It's an estimate, an in estimate of how much you're going to earn and how much you're going to spend. That's budget. Okay. There are a couple of different budgets. There's a cash budget, money in, money out. Making sure that you always have money in the bank at any one time so you can pay your bills. There's no point if you have a if you have a whole lot of expenses at the beginning of the month, but you don't earn any money or don't get any money in until the end of the month, you're going to have a shortfall. Yeah? So that's what the cash budget is for. It's to, to, to determine if you're going to have a shortfall with cash. And most small businesses go under 
because they haven't managed their cash flow properly. So they haven't been able to pay their bills on time because they don't have the cash. You've also got a sales budget. Why would you want a sales budget? Why would you want to estimate, estimate your sales? If you're a nice cream place, why do you want to estimate your sales? plan in advance, okay? If you have a sales budget, you can say, I think I'm going to make 10% more than last year. If you make 10%, you can make long-term decisions. Yeah? Does that make sense? So if you know, like you guys, if you've got a job, and you say, actually, if I have this job for the next six months, I'm going to earn X. Therefore, I can buy a car. If you, don't, if you haven't predicted that you're going to have that job in the next six months, or going to earn that money in the next six months, how can you predict you're going to get a car? So it's planning. Production budget. <clears throat> that in regards to seasonal fluctuation. What's the thing that's happening at the moment with the pickers? All of our um, uh, fruit and I think they had strawberry pickers. What's happening at the moment? Does anyone watch the news? What is it? No? Have you watched the news? At the moment, there's a, a very big concern that there's going to be um, the strawberries and all of our fruit are not going to be picked. Because what we usually do is we get migrants in to come over from Samoa, from the islands mainly, they come over, spend a couple of months here, pick all our proud fruit, and then we can export it out. Because of COVID, we can't get those people in. I have seen ads on TV promoting people in the holidays to go up and be pickers. Has anyone else seen that? Yeah? To earn extra cash? That's what they're talking about. So we have, don't and that's a seasonal variation. So with the production, they need, people, these companies need to know when they need to pick the fruit. That production level goes up, therefore they need to employ more staff. If they didn't have a budget, or didn't know how much, how many people they need, they wouldn't be able to manage that. So that's what the production budget does. It's to realise when you need your peaks and troughs, when you need the people, when you need your stock. Okay? Another example might be um, Whitakers. In the winter, because it's cold and wet and miserable, everybody wants to eat chocolate. Well, I do. So they might need more cocoa beans in the winter. Yeah? Where do cocoa beans come from? 
Do we produce it in New Zealand? No. Cocoa beans? No. So you have to get, you have to realise where your seasonal fluctuations are so you can get your stock in. So you can, you can get your cocoa beans in so you can actually produce the stuff. Yeah? And that's your budgeting. It's another budget. It's just estimates. That's all budgets are. They're just estimates. <clears throat> Capital expenditure. This is a long term thing. When are you going to buy your big machinery? Are you going to need your big machinery? Because these are big capital. What am I meaning by capital? Capital expenditure. That is capital in regards to equity. Capital in regards to capital expenditure is assets. It's your big assets. Okay? So uh, buildings, land, big machinery, big trucks. That's what you'd be calling capital in capital expenditure. Okay? With those big purchases, you need to actually budget for that. Not many companies can go out and go, tomorrow I need a new car, I'm going to go and buy it. Yeah? They have to budget for that. That's what your capital expenditure is. You might be growing. You might be a manufacturing company, you might be growing. Therefore, the machinery that you're using isn't going to cover your capacity, what you need to produce. So you need to get a bigger machine. You have to budget that into it. Okay? Make sense? And then you've got your financial budgeted financial statements. Budgeted financial statements is a prediction of your income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. That's all it is. So you've got what your actual is, and then you've got your, what you've estimated. Easy? Sort of, Vanna, not really? when the exam is? Does anyone know when the exam is? The actual day?
make yourself available. Yeah? There is no excuse. There's no excuse for you not to come in. I know it's nice and comfortable at home and nice and warm. And you've got your TV and you've got all of that stuff around you. But come into school and I can do one-on-one -on -one tuition with you. Yeah? Does that sound like a plan? We've only got four weeks to learn this. It's not a lot of time. But we've got a lot of time once you've finished with the study. Any concerns, questions in regards to this? No? Anyone a bit uh, about it? No? I'm here. Also, I am marking your assessments for my class. Okay, I'm still marking it. So I should have them by the end of the week. And I suspect there will be a couple of resets. Not reset, uh, resets. Okay? Does that sound good? Okay. Any questions? going over this. What's the direct cost? Just in my back. What's the, what's the direct cost? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Indirect cost. That's your only piece. It's not directly associated with association with the units of the product. <clears throat> You've also got variable cost and fixed cost. What do you think variable cost is? Okay. 
by e, if you are a production, if you are a manufacturing company, you would a fixed cost would be rent. No matter how much you actually produce, that does not change. Yeah. To some extent, I'll caveat that because if you produce a lot, the premises might not be big enough. Variable costs are costs directly associated with the production, i.e. Um, the amount of raw materials you use. So if you're not producing anything, you're not going to use any raw materials, are you? No. You're not producing anything, are you going to use any electricity? Might use it a little bit for just keeping the lights on, but the actual machinery you're not going to actually use. Yeah, that's variable cost. So the more you produce, that variable cost goes up. There's such a thing as a semi-variable cost. Part of it's fixed, part of it's variable. I just told you one of them. Electricity is one. Because you've got a line fee. You pay a line fee, so you pay a set amount every month. Then you pay for per unit you use. That line fee is fixed. The amount of money you pay per unit is your variable. That is a semi-variable mixed cost. Okay. So it's partly fixed, partly variable. I don't know if you see that. <coughs> see how you've got fixed? sales then that's your cost so what you're trying to figure out is where your break even point is okay and your break even point is the amount you have to sell to make a What's the minimum amount you have to sell to make a profit? Okay. So what's the minimum you have to sell to cover your fixed cost? If you sell nothing, you get how much revenue? Zero. You don't sell anything, you don't get any revenue, do you? Yeah. You don't sell anything, you're still going to have to cover your fixed costs, aren't you? So this is your total cost here. This line is your total revenue. This point here is your break even. And what did I just say your break even cost was? What your break even?
On that graph, what's your break even? What's your number? How many units do you have to sell to break even? Three. And therefore, what does that mean to break even? meaning by profit margin? It's your profit. Yeah? It's a profit. As you can see, it's getting larger. Yeah. Why do you think it's getting larger? This is a statistical thing. Economies of scale. Has anyone heard of economies of scale? The more you produce, the more the fixed cost is spread over per unit. It's called economies of scale. For example, uh, if you were a plumber and you had an office staff person, you did one job, you'd have to pay exactly the same as if you did 10 jobs. Because you'd have to pay that office staff the same amount. Yeah? Make sense? And it's when you're in accounting and when you're in business. As I said, this fixed cost may jump up. Why would that jump up? Why would that fixed cost all of a sudden jump up? If you keep on producing more and more and more, you're going to run out of room, aren't you? People are going to get overworked. That office staff person might be able to t handle 10 customers but might not be able to handle a thousand customers by yourself. She, you need to get more people. You might need to get bigger premises. So it's a juggling act in business to where this fixed cost all of a sudden jumps up and goes up. That makes sense? If this jumps up, your profit's going to go down. That total cost is going to go up. 
Yeah. So it's managing that economies of scale to the point where you need to increase your fixed costs. Make sense? Sort of. Big concepts that you're learning. Really big concepts. might need to know. Relevant range. That relevant range is the point in which the, these fixed costs go up. What is the maximum amount of production you can do without having to go and get a bigger site? Or employing more people. That is a relevant range. Contribution margin. Is this? Okay. The difference between the selling price and the variable cost per item. Break it even to the point where you might start making a profit. And the margin of safety is the difference between the existing level of sales and the level required to break even. So if we're producing six units and break even was three, Margin of safety would be three. Make sense? So the margin of safety is if you drop a whole lot of clients, how close are you getting to making that loss or not hitting that break even point? Yeah? Before you go under. Yeah? Make sense? So In your books, page one. I've just Page one, so page, first page, second page, we're talking about cost volume profit analysis. Do you want me to do the first question with you? variable cost, total cost, total revenue. Yep. Got units 5, 10, 15, 20, 
per unit. So if I produce five units, how much is it going to be? If I produce no units, it's going to be zero. Yeah? If I produce five units, how much is it going to be? How much are we selling these products for? that little graphy thing you can fill up. So, yeah. We'll go up in 20s. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 
guys fun here, they say? Yeah? So, first one. What's our fixed cost? 30,000. For everything? Yes. That's our fixed cost. Yep. Our variable cost. That's a zero. At 10, we'll go up to 20. That's our variable cost. Revenue at zero is zero. Twenty five, uh, fifty. Okay. At twenty, it's hundred. Confident enough to show me where I'm losing, where I'm making a loss. Showing in the proportion I'm making a loss for. Who's confident enough? So, what is, how do you make profit? What's profit? when you start making a profit. is my what? Yeah. Yeah. And how much profit in between these lines? 
Begin revenue minus total cost. See that? Okay, well, let's answer some of these questions. I'm sure we've already done it. Yeah? What is the break even in terms of dollars, of sales and number of units? What's break even? As per unit. You already gave that to me. Ten. ten. So it's ten units. And how much dollars? you could say that the fixed cost is the same over the relevant range of output. Stays constant. The cost stays constant. The variable is this one. What's that done? What's that curve doing? rising constantly. As the units go up, the costs go up at a constant rate. Yeah? Yep. Makes sense? Because that's what variable costs are, aren't they? Variable costs are, as your units go up, your variable costs go up. Fixed is no matter if your units go up, the price stays constant. Yeah? Who can give me question three? If the sales were a thousand, hundred thousand dollars, what is the what would the profit be? between your revenue and your what's this one? Cost. Total cost. It's a profit. Okay. If your sales were five, what would your profit? Would it be a profit or a loss? Profit or loss? Loss. Loss? By how much? Quite simple, eh? You're doing analysis. This is all it is. You're reading off the graph. It's telling a story. Yeah? What is the total? Variable costs at 5,000 units and 30,000. What's the variable cost at 5,000 units? In green versus 30.
Okay, go on. The best questions? Yeah? What is the number seven, I think we're up to? Yeah? How many units must be sold to break even? How many units must be sold to break even? Break it off the break. Ten. Ten. Exactly. How many units must be sold to make thirty thousand? Ten. Ten. How did you work that out? Make a profit of 60,000. 30. 30. So that's 150 and 90. Why do you need to know your break-even analysis? Why do you need to know that? Why do you want to know where your break-even is? When you're introducing a new product. Break even. Go back to the basics. What's break even? Covers the cost. Hmm? Covers the little flaps. Yeah, revenue. It's the point where you don't make a profit and you don't make a loss. You're breaking even. Your costs are covered by the revenue you actually make. Yeah? That's what break even is. If you're introducing a new product line, why would you want to know how many units you have to make before you break even? Because it gives me to actually make a profit. Exactly. Take a, a step further, okay? Once you've figured out your break even point, what do you need to do? You need to go to market to see if you can actually sell that amount. Yeah? There's no point in going, okay, my break even point is 10 units, but the market, I can only sell five to my market. Yeah? Is it worth actually producing that? No, you wouldn't produce that new line. However, if you turned around and said, my break-even point was 10, but I can sell 35,000 units, would you go and do it? Yeah. So you have to know what your market's going to take so to relate this back. Do you see how useful that is? And that's why you're using this sort of data make decisions. This data by itself isn't enough, is it, to make those decisions. You need additional information to, back, to get a fuller picture. The fact that you know that you could possibly
actually um, sell 35 units, 35,000 units, is that enough information to make that decision without doing this analysis? If I went to market, if I had a new product and I went, I can, I can sell 100,000 units. That's all well and good, it sounds great. But how much is it going to cost me to produce that? Is it worth me producing that? Is it, am I going to make a profit on producing 100,000 or do I have to produce a million? Do you see what I mean? You need both lots of information to get a fuller picture to be able to make a, an informed decision about what you're actually doing. Yeah? So this on itself doesn't give you the answer, but that plus other information gives you a fuller picture. Yeah? Makes sense? What time's the bell ring? 10.30. Okay. So, you might want to read over contribution margins and margin safety, and then start on exercise one on page five. Unless you want me to go through the contribution margins. I've done quite a bit of talking. Not muted? music you want from the Jedi? Anything? Anything. Oh, which one? I'm good, I'm YouTubing it. Just give me something. Loki Beast is that YouTube. Loki? Loki. L-O-K-A. L-O-K-A. I lost any of these. 